didn't talk to anybody and came down here and just saw them lying around like that, you think, what an idyllic beach my mom. <laughs> Go out and catch a couple of fish and then come back and fly around the whole next day. Well, they're fast. These animals are not going to eat for a month. And uh, one of the ways they go through these fast periods is if you pick them up and watch them for any length of time, you're going to see them go through long bouts of sleep after. They might breathe once every 10 minutes, maybe only three or four times in an hour. And their heart rate, getting a bradycardia, might get as low as 10 or 20 beats a day. So the metabolic rate level. It's something that's similar to their life at sea, because when they're diving down, they don't have breathing, and their heart rate slows way down. The only difference out there, at least they're eating. So they're getting food too. One of the things that helps them on their foraging is that they have a small intestine that's 25 times the body length. So that means a mature male has a small intestine that's 400 feet long. So they can really process food in a hurry. <laughs> and eat a lot of it one time. I think process food in five or six hours. So that's good because food is not evenly spaced out there. You might run into days where they can't find anything. And then they'll run into a big bloom of food and they'll take advantage of that because they can eat so much that they won't have process. So that vocal thread you heard, uh, that's the vocal thread that the males make when they're trying to intimidate other males. See, it sounds like a how to tune Harley item in the gym. Or my favorite, it sounds more like a plateau. <laughs> it's a very unique sound. And basically, you're saying, I'm big, I'm bad, don't make me come over here. So, uh, anyway, there are alpha males that are dominating an area of the beach. And during the birthing and mating season, there are also secondary males, we call them sneakers. And they try to sneak in. And so that's what the alpha male is trying to prevent and sneaking in and doing some mating. The advantage the alpha male has, he'll have 20 to 50 females in this territory. But like I mentioned, they're all loners at sea. They all have their own biological clock. So all 50 of those females arrive over about a six week period. That's great. That means he doesn't have to mate with them all in one day. That's a good one. Anyway. Uh, you can see this on the lower right hand, left hand corner, right hand corner, there's a sneaker. Mm -hmm. And so this guy is trying to prevent that, he'll rear up, give that big vocal threat. And uh, also you'll see a lot of secondary or beta males are hanging out at the water's edge. The reason they do that is the females will get impregnated by the alpha male after they nurse their pup for a month. And then they want to leave. You know, they want to get out in the ocean and start eating. And so when they do, they have to run a gauntlet of all those secondary males out there. And they'll try to mate with them as they're mating. So if they leave at low tide, it can take a long time to get out into the water. Anybody have any questions about what I mentioned so far? Well, so I'll, I'll just summarize before we go into the question phase. So conservation success story, right? So over harvesting of a lot of our marine mammals up and down the coast. So these guys have recovered, right? So the fact that they're here means that their populations are expanding, right? And so now we think that their populations are basically maybe pre-exploitation levels or approximately. We don't know what it, what the carrying capacity was right. for elephant seals before we hunted them. So we don't know eventually they're going to reach that great type of seesaw thing. The only difference is right now is there are fewer great white sharks and killer whales in the region. So that means that there may be more seals, elephant seals, sea lions, harbor seals than there used to be. And I've had uh, commercial fishermen bemoan the fact that. <laughs> and I say, well, you know, you're one of the reasons why, because of overfishing and bycatch, the great white seals, they don't even start eating marine mammals until they're about 10 years old. And until then, they're eating mostly fish, which is when they're most likely to get caught in a fishing net and drown. Doing away with those fishing nets has really made a big difference. And eventually the sea of the harp, the great whites will come back and then we'll probably have you know more of a <laughs> control <laughs> of seals <laughs> than there is now. And uh, you know that's I think that's gonna happen. The only difference is is that the carbon or elephant seals spend very little time near shore near the surface. Not to say it's gonna happen. Sometimes see seals with uh, 
shark bites on them or things like that. This one has lost its chromosomes. It's probably not going to survive. And this one was alive, by the way, the seal. I put this photograph up. But I can imagine that a lot of those bullets are infected. You know, and that's why it's not going to survive. So when you see all these bloody fights for the males, none of them die on the beach. The males usually quit and uh, they'll decide, oh, this is too much for me. Uh, and so he'll stop fighting so that Victor gets to dominate an area of the beach. The only trouble is, is that any one of these wounds can easily be So indirectly they might not survive. Or any one of these wounds can hamper their fortune building, like losing an eye or breaking a jar or something. So then, indirectly, they might not survive. Is uh, the molt and the molt comes apart in big flaps like this. One side is the fur, and the other side is uh, it feels like velcro is actually nice. 